Hi, this is Richard at HHO for Volts. And um, I got kind of snookered into this Gabriel Transformer thing by Klinghoffer. And <laughs> it's a joke. There's no documentation that it ever worked. No samples, just a pretty drawing. Anyway, I do want to release uh, here uh, my work on the MAG2, and this is version 0.2. Uh, what you're seeing here uh, is that we have a 24-layer, 24-point Starship coil on the end of this assembly. Uh, the winding on the core is 17 gauge, 750 turns. Now, uh, what we do on that is that it, when you get to the end, it's called a typewriter return. You bring the wire back and you start your next layer until you get 750 turns on it. You'll see the magnet on that, and the magnet on this particular one, uh, uh, actually what it's doing is adjusting the, the uh, resonance of the assembly. We have a MAG-3, which I'll talk about later, that does not require this. And we're driving this with my circuit that I've used for years and I've published, but we're only using the signal out of the 555. We're not running it through the MOSFET. And so there's very, very little current going on here. And this is the circuit that I've published, and a lot of people have uh, emailed me, and I've sent them this to them. You can do away with all the over-unity protection. Anything uh, to the right of that arrow going up uh, there is uh, not necessary. You're going to use the takeoff point to the left. That's all you need. Okay? And it's, it's a very versatile uh, thing. It goes up to about 115 uh, kilohertz. So this is what we drive the, the, the input. The input is the 750 turns. And you look here. Uh, at this, and it's, it's just about a 3% um, pulse. Uh, so uh, just thinking about the 3%, there, there's hardly any type of current involved in this. We got a, a, a turn ratio, primary, 750 turns versus 24 layers on the starship. It should be a step down, not a step up. And so here we're back to the actual thing here, that the power supply is 1.53. DC, and it's just using like 0.03 some watts to drive it. And we're getting uh, an output on this one uh, of, I think, 413. And, and here's the neat thing. You pulse it, but it puts out, puts out a pure sine wave. So with a 3% pulse, you're getting a continuous sine wave, not just a ringing that dampens out. This is a pure side way that goes forever and ever unless you take the pulse off of it. So uh, this should lead to a very efficient, I'm not saying over unity, but uh, what we need to do here, and I've run out of time to do this, this is why I'm releasing it. You need to put like a load resistor on the uh, uh, coil uh, of uh, say 10K and a one ohm resistor in series and measure the true power uh, uh, drawn by the 10K load. Uh, also, uh, I want to say that you need to have a tuning capacitor on the output of the tuning coil. Uh, start around 600 picofarad, but make sure you use a, a high enough voltage rating because I've had them explode. Uh, that's how efficient this circuit is. So again, we're just showing um, a, um, uh, this is the, I believe, the driver pulse, and we're just showing that the, the calibration is the same for the A and B probe. Now, unfortunately, a lot of times we can't have it simultaneously hooked up because the ground area is different. Now, with a load, and this is, remember, this is a high impedance output, you do get a rounding of the sine wave here. So we're drawing here um, a 0 0.018 amps, so a total wattage about 0 0.02 something. And here is the... Uh, one of the graphs I have here, blue is the DCN. The red, you only start to see something on the red when you're getting up to putting about 10 to 14 volts in. It's pretty linear up to about 10 to 11 volts, and then it starts to uh, saturate a little bit. And uh, that again is just, uh, this is off my spreadsheet. I, I run these tests from about 17 kilohertz up to 115 
And basic with the Starship One, uh, I would say that the optimum is around 37 to 42 kilohertz input. So I have a spreadsheet. I, I can send this to anybody at once. It, you can see how it gets very nonlinear when you start to reach, like this one around, starting to get at, at 8 volts. And these are all based on different uh, frequencies and different tuning capacitors across the secondary. The secondary coil is the Starship coil. So it should be a step down, but it's a step up. Uh, something that cannot be explained easily. Again, here with this particular test, we're showing a very nonlinear thing. We're hitting 10 volts and peaking there at about, uh, uh, what's that, 5 volts? So, uh, but that was the MAG-1, and this is called the Black Mamba, which has four Russian large um, ferrite rods, a Q of 800, and we're using Cat5 wire, which is uh, four pairs of, uh, 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 it actually has four pairs in there. This is really neat to use because you can mount this on a board and bring those lines out and be able to customize your uh, testing. Thank you. This is Richard with uh, HHO for Volts. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.